over 100 million USD. Really? Close to 200. I'm in Dubai. I'm at Luxury Soup with the amazing Khalid. So thank you for letting me in. Welcome anytime. And seeing all of this. I, I basically just said to Khalid, I want to see some amazing, rare, unique, you know, some of the most expensive watches in the world. And I think you've done a very good job. Thank you of, very much. Um, <laughs> showing me so. Should we? I'll, I'll follow you. It's number zero 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 one. It's a skeleton. It's white gold. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece. How many of these were made? Uh, this watch actually, you have to place an order, and mm. Jacob is gonna study your profile and your background. Sure. They're gonna examine you, and they're gonna create one for you. So it takes time. So it's not it's not a catalog watch. You no, can't this watch I have sold to my customer, mm -hmm. and then I bought it back mm. uh, just last week. Okay. Uh, and I tried to get a few more pieces like this. I wasn't able because the Jacob said he has to make one mm. more. Yeah. Yeah. So here, okay. some of the very special ones. You know, we, I've got a lot of Richard Mills in this stock that's uh, limited to one to ten pieces. You know, that's this Congo is one of them. This wow. is a slightly used watch. Uh, 30 pieces. You know the story behind this watch. I just recently did a short uh, one minute video. What is the story behind this? <clears throat> you know the designer is uh, Cyril Congo. No. Uh, the watch is made the 30 piece limited and it's good for you to know that each 30 piece it's unique mm -hmm. because it's all hand painted and you know who is Cyril Congo? He was uh, he's a French uh, painter, artist, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that used to paint uh, on the streets of yeah, uh, yeah, France, yeah. taking tunnels and uh, walls, but this time it was with Richard Mill in That's 2016. Cool. At yeah. the age of 11 he started uh, working on his passion. Wow. And uh, yeah, this watch, uh, the official retail price of it is 685,000 US dollars, but the market price at the moment that the prices are down, it's mm. still 2.5 million wow. US dollars. And you know why I love this watch? Because the story behind this, that the Cyril Farm, mm -hmm. uh, that's his real name, but he's known as Cyril Congo mm -hmm. because he, he, was, he spent his childhood in the Republic of Congo. Mm. What, you what, next? what else you like? This one, mm. the Manchester. Yeah, Manchester City. This is this yes. is a one of ten, right? Yes, it's ten piece limited. When the our uh, uh, royal families of UAE, uh, he took over the Manchester club, mm -hmm. and then with collaboration with Richard Mill, they came up with ten pieces. It's a split second uh, RM. Wow. It's very rare. It's been re it's this. Uh, the, this transaction took place uh, seven, eight years ago, so the watch is seven, eight years old. Mm -hmm. But in the last eight years, it's my first time I see this RM. Wow. I've never seen this RM before. It's just limited, ten pieces, you know. So who do you, wants do you think? Do you think football players bought this watch? Do you think they got offered this by Richard Mill? Uh, no, it's it's actually just made uh, for the. UAE royal family ah. that he gave out uh, this one. I see. And it's just, it was a special order. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Well, speaking uh, of speaking of footballers, do you sell many watches to footballers? Uh, we have some footballers uh, as a customer, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they are not uh, like the most of my in customers. Sure. You know, sure. it's just sure. uh, yes, we have some good footballers yeah, aside from us. Really, some really well known, like yes. Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, not yet, but he's very close to us. He's yeah, in Saudi he Arabia, close. so he's close. one day probably. Yeah, <laughs> you never know. True. This this watch is ten piece limited, and it's a special number as well. So you know these arms. This arm is is a five piece limited. I always love uh, the limited editions because whenever you want to resell, mm. uh, there's no much of an option and competition if somebody loves it and he will go for it. So I always recommend limited pieces in a very high-end brand. Are most of your customers uh, locals or expats or international people? Uh, it is international. We have a lot of customers from UK. Yeah. We have from London, a lot mm -hmm. of customers from London. We have a lot of customers from Germany. And uh, from all over the world, it's from New York we have. So basically all the rich people that live in the, these fashion uh, cities. So people fly yeah. to you to and buy We have good customers luckily here. Mm. As you know, Dubai is 
90% expat, 10% are Emirati. So um, if you want to know most of the customers, they are uh, expat. So you've been in business in Dubai for a long time, maybe the longest. Do you think you are the biggest watch business in Dubai, maybe even in the world? Uh, maybe. You think? <laughs> I think? I think maybe. Like, yeah, I think, I think so. I don't know of any other watch business that could do this. We are quite good in our job, you mm. know. We, do you own all these assets or are some of them consignment? 95% uh, of the watches I own them, which sure. uh, I buy, straight buy, but yeah. uh, I have watches that are consigned to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I did not really buy them because yeah. uh, if I don't reach an agreement on the price with the customer, mm -hmm. I just request if they, they prefer to consign and to go for little extra dollars uh, sure. to get in their own pocket, you know, okay. and that's, that's fine. That's I fine. don't invest, I make my, I would say, brokerage fee. Yeah, brokerage, <laughs> that's exactly it, yeah. These are the gym set, AP. And these are all factory as well, yeah, we, need, we need to, we need to I, say. I, I don't really do aftermarket uh, yeah. diamond watches. I'm not a big fan of them because once the customers, they buy, if they go to the official brands, and they wouldn't give a good feeling, you know, they would mm. say it's fake watch, even though the diamond has been, it's a, it's a real diamond, has been set it after market, uh, they, they, the impression is not good, they tell you it's a fake watch, and it's never an investment piece. Mm. If you put a lot of that, I know it's very common with the rappers, True. a lot of people, they do it in US and in London market too, but I have never been a fan of uh, aftermarket diamonds watches because it's very highly uh, priced and expensive time pieces so I, I look at them as investment yeah and I don't want to ruin my investment sure with drilling and putting diamonds that doesn't really come from the factory yeah. you're upgrading yourself to look like something else which is not you know so it doesn't give the wrong impression mm. and many people think that uh, nobody knows you have to know if the same style of diamond sitting is there mm -hmm in the brand yeah it, it makes it difficult for uh, for people to say it if it's aftermarket or not but if never this type of diamond sitting full diamond has been made by the brand then it's very easy for sure. everyone to spot that this is not yeah, from it's true the brand itself what we got here oh wow this is a beautiful watch that's a platinum one that's out of catalog yeah i can tell <laughs> yes that's out <laughs> yeah. of catalog model with the factory diamond do you know how many platinum they make of the 57 one? They actually don't really properly communicate how many pieces of each models they are making. But not a lot. Not a very lot. few. Yes, yeah. not a lot. It's very difficult to find them in the market. Uh, like a few dealers all around the world, yeah. they have something like that in the stock. Of all your watches then, do you know what sort of value you have in assets at the moment? How, much how many? How many tens of millions of like USD? <laughs> if you had to guess, what would you say? I'll, I'll, I don't I'll, have to guess. I know. You know. What it is. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll guess how much in stock in assets you in USD you must have. Yeah, I've seen a lot of the stuff that I'm hiding also, right? Yeah, hi yeah, 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 yeah. True. True. There's a lot more. There's a lot. Uh, it has to be. It has to be over 100 million USD. Yeah, it's so it's way over. Way over. Way over. Close to two hundred. <laughs> Something like that. Oh, that's, that's incredible. That is. Yeah, it's something like that. That's honestly incredible. You know, that's that's very funny when when we put videos and people start guessing how much money is there on the mm -hmm. table. Mm -hmm. You know, on it's Instagram a good game. And, uh, people want to know. People want to know. Yeah. Yeah. What is it like having a business in Dubai? Well, I think Dubai is still a very lovely place, especially if you're talking about opening a business yeah. in watches in Dubai. That is still one of the best places in the world, probably the safest place in the world to wear very high-end watches uh, on day-to-day -day basis on the streets, in mm. coffee shops or anywhere. You know, nobody cares, you know, nobody cares. Nobody's gonna annoy you and it's a very, 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 very safe very place. Safe. And thanks God, if uh, I was on a different part, living different part of the world, I would never do these watches. Uh, you know, it's just with, with these, no way, yeah, no way. Uh, it's impossible, I would tell you. Yeah, I personally love this black ceramic. What do you think about this? That it, as well. I, I think 
Yeah. I'm interested to know of all of these watches as well, Khalid, if you had to choose one of these to wear, let's say for the rest of your life, which one would you choose? Of well, all of these? I have one decent autumn on my wrist. It's my personal collection. I really love this one. Beautiful. It's a, it's tin. It's a platinum. I try not to wear gold. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, because of the religious, the religious reason. Yeah. yeah, I try not to wear gold. Even sometimes uh, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> yeah. The platinum version in blue dial. It's very rare. Mm. It's unlike the rose gold. Unlike the titanium or white gold. This one is very rare. Yeah. yeah. Have you have you met Richard before? Uh, personally, yeah. no, not really. No? Okay. Yeah. Do you have do you have any relationship with any brands? Any of the, oh, yeah, any of of the big the big brands? Uh, see, we have a lot of customers in in common, and uh, mm. if personally directly talking to the big boys, mm. not really. So the Rolex, especially when it comes to Rolex, Patek, okay, or AP. But I have like hundreds and hundreds, thousands of friends. Who know the Tirish term directly, or sure. they know Francois of AP directly, mm -hmm. or they know uh, Mr. Richard Mill, mm -hmm. or, or Amanda, his daughter. Sure. So, you know, I have a lot of common friends okay. I see on day to day basis. I hear what they say, uh, yeah. I see photos, but personally, to deal directly mm -hmm. with these four brands, no, because they are too much focused on end users. Mm -hmm. and they're not really doing wholesale, they're not really doing, uh, you know, discounted watches, mm. discount them in the market, but the rest of the brands, yes, yeah. I, I'm directly sure. kind of connected with the uh, brands. Mm. Okay, so if you were, were going to meet uh, one of the sheikhs or a president of a country, what, what would you wear? Tomorrow, you're going to meet them tomorrow, which one would you choose? Well, uh, I always prefer to in a places like this because mm -hmm. it's a formal meeting. Mm -hmm. I prefer to wear a, a classic watches, you know, oh, okay. like uh, like the arm that I'm wearing, mm -hmm. or any other pieces that really doesn't show a lot. Okay. I don't okay. go with the very oversized pieces. I will not go with the diamond pieces. Mm -hmm. I because that's more accepted among those society for sure so it depends to the meeting but if you are going to uh, ibiza <laughs> yeah, you yeah, need yeah. something more colorful then, then maybe you can wear orange <laughs> with some diamonds wear this one yeah, it depends yeah. to where you're going yeah, i would yeah, say yeah. yeah have you ever sold any watches to the royal family in oh, dubai abu dhabi a or? lot really yes you know them well I know I have you some, know I have I have some good uh, connections you know even the royal families uh, of UAE are very humble mm -hmm. uh, and you know very welcoming mm -hmm. you know they are they leave uh, with all the security and bodyguards mm -hmm. in the society among people wow. you know they they quite very well they know very well what's going uh, yeah. on in the city and they are very much loved people so they they are not uh, they don't need security or anything. It's good. Yeah, it's good. I would say we are all their soldiers, you know. Yeah. Have you ever bought a watch and thought, I, I can't sell this and you just keep it yourself? You want to see my personal collection? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> has seen my personal collection in the UK. Really? You have a lot Is it of, here? Uh, Is yeah. It? Oh, yeah. Yeah? It's, it's in the safe. It's a Khaled. few big safes. I, 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 would, I would love to see. Yeah? I would love to see. <laughs> You will not believe your eyes. Oh, please. I'm challenging you. Okay. Let's do it? Yeah, let's do let's it. Let's go and see. Okay, it. okay, okay, okay.